predicted topics for paper 3 OCR A level chemistry A exam 2024. Out of all of the three papers of OCR chemistry A, paper 3 is the hardest to predict because it covers all the specification. However, this prediction is based on my analysis of the previous exam papers over the last few years and also um, based on um, some knowledge of some of the topics that didn't feature much in paper 1 and paper 3. Topic one is enthalpy change. This is very common in paper three, even if it features in paper one. So I would really be surprised if this topic doesn't come up in paper three this year. So there might be something like a calorimetry experiment. They ask you to calculate the enthalpy change for a solution. Um, remember that Q equals MC delta T and the delta H is the Q in kilojoule per mole. The Bornheber uh, process also very common in paper three. Entropy and delta G calculation, if it didn't feature in paper one, then expect it to be in paper three. If it featured in paper one, most probably it's not going to be in paper three. So they could ask you about spontaneous reactions as well. This is very common if it's not in paper one to show up or to come up in paper three. Topic three is reaction rate and order calculations. This is also one of the um, quite common questions or topics in paper three, even if they come up in paper one. However, when this question comes in paper three, it would be um, about the things that hasn't been covered in uh, paper one. Uh, so um, reaction order determination and the rate determining step that features a lot in paper three, even when it comes up in paper one. Um, Arrhenius equation, if it didn't come in paper one, then probably the reaction rate and um, uh, you could have the Arrhenius equation this time. Um, the Boltzmann distribution, the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve, if it didn't uh, come up in paper one, then this is the one that uh, will come up in paper three. So you know exactly what you had in paper one. So make sure that you are uh, covering this topic properly, especially the things that didn't come up in paper one. Atomic structure and bonding. So this is quite common in paper three, but most of the questions related to this one comes in the form of explaining the difference in the boiling points or melting points, either due to the change, um, the difference in the type of bond or the intermolecular forces of attraction. Um, so it's going to be uh, also um, discussing electronegativity and how does this affect the boiling points of your different compounds. Uh, topic five is the qualitative analysis. So they could ask you to carry out a series of chemical tests to identify your cation and anion. They either going to give you the test and their, um, the, the results of the test and ask you to identify the cation and anion or give you the cation and anion, ask you to uh, use chemical tests to identify these. So make sure that you know your test tube reactions. So these are the simple test tube reactions that can be done to identify the following ions, group two uh, ions. Remember the test was ammonia, sodium hydroxide excess, excess sulfuric acid, and the results. Uh, ammonium ion test, which is the sodium hydroxide test, and then litmus paper, the halide ions, the silver nitrate test, and then complexation with ammonia. Carbonate test, the dilute hydrochloric acid, and then the test for carbon dioxide with lime water, sulfate ion with barium chloride, and of course the aqua ions or the ions from the transition metals and their uh, tests. Some basic calculations that you will uh, kind of definitely need for your uh, exam. So ideal gas law will definitely be in the exam. So they're going to ask you to calculate something related to gases. So you're definitely going to use the ideal gas law in the exam. Isotopes and relative atomic mass calculations. Uh, these kind of um, calculation may show may or may not show up in your exam, but it was to uh, revise this before your exam as well. Empirical formula and molecular formula very common in paper three. So make sure you know how to do these calculations. Uh, uncertainty as well and percentage yield. So these uh, basic calculations are just 
and most of these will be in your exam. So make sure that you know how to do this calculation. It also works, go over this one, the calculation of KC and KP, even if they showed up in, uh, or came up in paper one, there is still a possibility that they may ask you to do calculation for KC or KP and also pH calculations because these are one of the common questions. So just make sure that you know how to do these calculations before your exam. Topic seven is shapes of molecules. Shapes of molecules will come up in paper three if it didn't come up heavily in paper one. So normally if it wasn't in paper one, it will be in paper three. So um, also the ligands and transition metal complexes, their shapes, this is and trans um, shapes for the uh, complexes. So make sure that you know these ones if they didn't come up in paper Topic six, uh, topic seven is the electrode potential and redox reaction. Again, this is um, most of the time it's uncommon to have this topic heavily in paper one and paper three at the same in the same year. Um, however, if one of these came up in paper one, then the other might show up or come up in paper three. If both of them have been, um, you have been asked it heavily on these topics in paper one, very unlikely they will be in paper three. However, um, it's in paper three, there is at least one redox reaction and they ask you uh, to write the equations. So make sure how to write, uh, you know how to write the redox equation. Uh, topic eight is organic chemistry. So uh, paper three is not organic chemistry heavy. It's mostly an organic and physical chemistry. Um, what I expect in the organic chemistry um, is the alkanes because uh, they weren't much on alkanes in paper two this year. So maybe there will be something about alkanes this year, maybe radical substitution reactions or ozone depletion. So make sure you know these ones. Uh, functional group identification, the chemical test to identify the different functional group for organic uh, molecules because it hasn't featured in uh, paper two. So maybe it will be in paper three. Um, analytical techniques, um, they are not, again, the questions are quite simple when it comes to analytical techniques in paper three compared to paper two. I'm sure there were a lot of analytical techniques, NMR, um, IRs in paper uh, two. So uh, sometimes some of these questions come up again in paper three, but they are much simpler. So the, for NMR, for example, they could ask you to identify the number of chemically uh, non-chemically um, non equivalent or chemically non-equivalent carbons or hydrogen or how many signals or how, would you expect in the um, NMR. Um, and uh, for IR, they may be talking about a certain starting material and a certain product and give you the IR of one of the products and ask you to identify the structure based on the um, functional group or the uh, peaks you see in the IR. Uh, reaction mechanisms, the reaction mechanisms that come up in paper three are usually unfamiliar reaction mechanisms. They are unfamiliar in terms of the nucleophile and the electrophile that you use. One of them is usually unfamiliar, but the reaction mechanism itself is one of the reaction mechanisms that you have covered uh, during your specification. So just what you need to do is to make sure to identify your electrophile and your nucleophile in that reaction. Uh, the proposed reaction type. Uh, so just quickly go over the different reactions uh, without going into too much details into the reaction mechanisms. Just you need to know what are the different reaction types, the substitution, elimination and addition. Um, so all of different reaction types and then follow the rules for the curly arrows. So that's all what you need to do and you can answer this question perfectly. Amino acids, because they didn't feature in paper two, so uh, maybe they will come in paper three this year. So make sure that you read about amino acids and the um, uh, isomerism, how they are uh, chiral compounds, uh, all of that, because isomers is one of the topics that comes a lot in paper three, whether they are talking about the um, uh, E and Z isomers for alkenes or the R and S uh, isomers, the optical isomers. Uh, also carboxylic acid derivatives because they haven't featured much in paper two as far as I know. So maybe one of the questions in the organic chemistry would be about carboxylic acid derivatives. So um, uh, acyl chloride, the amides, um, uh, anhydride, just make sure that you know all about these ones. 
Uh, paper three has some specific type of question that usually don't come up in paper one and paper two. For example, they may ask you to draw a, a diagram for an apparatus. So make sure that you know how to draw these uh, diagrams. Uh, for different apparatus. Uh, also, they could ask you how to purify a certain compound from a reaction, how to do recrystallization, or how to make a standard solution. So make sure you know these techniques and how to answer this type of question. There is no guarantee that this will actually be in your exam, but these are kind of specific type of questions for paper three. So just make sure that you, you are able to cover all of these points.